Hey guys, we're back in the garage today uh, doing episode 3 of Tire Fight. Uh, last time we did episode 2 and we compared an IRC and a Michelin Moto Tire. Today we are going to compare two Extreme Enduro Tires or Enduro Cross Tires. Specifically, we're going to look at the IRC Gakota JX8. This is a new tire from IRC. It's supposed to be a um, kind of a, uh, a magical tire. It's supposed to be able to do everything well. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. I've got about 20 hours on this tire already. We are gonna compare this, uh, this tire to a uh, Michelin Extreme Enduro tire. This is a tire that's used a lot in Europe. It's got uh, the short FIM knobs, but it's got some really special rubber, some really soft, sticky rubber, and a large carcass. And I have about a uh, little over 10 hours on that, on that tire. So I try to test between 10 and 15 hours but right around 10 hours, I feel like I get a good, I'm able to do a good uh, kind of analysis of the tire. So uh, one more thing, I'm a real person. This is a real, real shop. Uh, this is where I work and I do a lot of work on my bikes and I do some professional work here. Um, I'm just sharing my opinion. I like to do this for fun and I'm certainly not sponsored. So um, please uh, give me feedback and comments on the section in the, uh, in the section below if you guys like what I'm doing. And if you can, check out episode one and two for other tires that I've done. And before we get started with episode three, I do want to give a shout out to a small company I started a couple months ago. We make uh, chain tools for, uh, for all types of dirt bikes. And then we also make uh, torque decals for KTMs and Yamaha bikes. Check us out and let me know what you think. Enjoy the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the process of tire fight. First, I purchase the tires. I buy these tires at retail price, usually from Rocky Mountain. My goal is to pick two tires that are head-to-head -head competitors. If I'm going to evaluate MX tires, I pick two MX tires. If it's enduro tires, I pick two enduro tires. And if they're gummy tires, well, they both have to be gummy tires. I'm trying to compare apples to apples here. I don't work for any tire manufacturer and I'm certainly not sponsored. First thing I do is I mount each tire to different wheel assemblies. That way I can swap back and forth between wheel assemblies if I want to do a back to back comparison, whether it's on the trail or here on my tracks. Next, I ride. I ride local trails that have a relative diversity of terrain. Keep in mind, I live in central Oregon, so it may be hard to find deep mud here. Here at home, I have a couple practice areas where I can really explore the technical possibilities of the tire. I have rocks, I have enduro cross type obstacles, and trials type obstacles. Here it's first and second gear only with technical obstacles. My turn track isn't fancy, but it helps me evaluate high speed turns, rutted turns, and turns at harsh angles. I ride each tire a minimum of 15 hours, and I don't necessarily have a structured approach for what I ride and when I ride but I do put 15 hours on each tire. Once I feel like I have a good under understanding of each tire, I do an evaluation. The evaluation is broken up into two categories. First, I rate each tire and how it performs in soil types. Next, I look at each tire and give it a performance score in upright traction, fast turn grip, braking grip, predictability, and wear. For each evaluation section, there are the possibility of getting four stars or four icons. In this case, it's a wheelie icon. You can also get zero, and that just means it really is bad. Generally, one is poor, and four is, well, I can't imagine a better tire in these conditions or in this performance metric. If you get nothing, well, it's just terrible in that performance metric. At the end, I tally up the points and give my opinions. I will pick a winner, but ultimately, you get to decide what tire is right for you. Let's get started. Let's see how the Michelin and the IRC tires compare. They are both marketed as Enduro Cross tires or Extreme tires or Gummy tires. They're both marketed as high traction, soft tires, or exceptional grip uh, and across a wide range of applications. I gotta say, the Michelin is a pretty unique tire. I've actually never tested a tire quite like it. It has a wide footprint, a wide carcass, very unique rubber, and man, these tiny knobs. Initially, I was very impressed on how well it, it, it tracked through rocks and how well it gripped, and it does that very well. If you stay in first, second, and maybe even third gear, it's a pretty exceptional tire if you're, dry, if you're riding in dry, packed soils. 
However, in sand, it really does not perform. And in loose soils, it's just as bad. The braking grip is very poor. And really the tire just, it just starts to fall apart if you, if you get into a situation where you're spinning the tire. It's just such a narrowly, narrowly focused tire. Really, I guess it's just for extreme, and, or maybe I'm just not good enough to appreciate it. In general, and generally, it's just the faster you go, the worse it performs. The IRC, on the other hand, is a much better balanced tire. It might give up a slight amount of traction uh, in hard pack and in technical, but man, is it good in sand and is it good in mud? And it holds up in every other aspect as well. It's a pretty impressive tire. It's an all-around package that is hard to beat. You can see the JX8 Gakoda outperforms the Michelin in sand and it outperforms in mud. Maybe it gives up a little bit in technical, but not by much. Now let's tally up the points. The Michelin gets 15 points out of a possible 20, and the IRC JX8 gets 17 out of a possible 20. Now let's look at the performance ratings for each of these tires. In upright traction, the Michelin Extreme is exceptional. I mean, I don't think there is a better tire that grabs dry, packed soil better than this tire. It really is remarkable. And I only tested it at 10 PSI. I'm sure if you drop down to 8 PSI, 5 PSI, or even a soft mousse, you would get a lot more traction out of the tire. This is where the tire really excels. It's truly exceptional in this characteristic. However, in fast turn grip, it pretty much falls apart. I mean, yes, the tire is very predictable, but it just doesn't get a lot of grip, especially if you have to spin the, the tire. If you have to spin the tire, this tire just, just doesn't, it just doesn't do what you expect it to do. Again, it won't drop you because it's very predictable, but it just doesn't propel you forward. In braking grip, the tire's not good. I mean, in slow braking, maybe it's fine, but anytime you're coming in fast into a turn, it just doesn't, it just isn't good. I mean, the reality is that not only does it not grip very well, but it also doesn't give you feedback on when the tire is starting to skid. Predictability, I have to give it four marks because really, even though the tire suffers at high speed with braking grip and fast turn grip, you do feel what is exactly what's going on for the most part. With the exception of sliding the rear tire, you, you do get a sense of exactly what the tire is gonna do when it releases grip, and even it, when it releases grip, it doesn't do anything crazy or scary. So it's a predictable tire, and honestly, that's what saves it at high speed. Wear is actually pretty good. Uh, I would say wear is actually better than the RC. Uh, I've rated them equal here, but the wear is, is probably a little better on the Michelin. All in all, the Michelin is a very unique tire. I'm not sure most guys in the US have experienced a tire like this. It's just so unique. It, it does certain things really well, and it does other things just not well. And it really is, I guess, for extreme riding, an or very focused type of riding. Now let's talk about the IRC JX8. Upright traction is very good. It's not as good as a Michelin Extreme, and it's not as good as some other tires out there. But it's close, and I mean, for it, for what it does in other realms of performance, it's pretty impressive what it can do in upright traction. For the type of riding I do, which is a big mix of a lot of things, and certainly not just exclusively extreme riding, it's plenty of grip upright. And, and I would say it's got more upright grip than most guys can use. In fast turn grip, it's good. I mean, it's not a moto tire good, but it's just as good as any gummy tire. And I would say it's probably better than most gummy tires. In braking grip, it's actually very good. Um, it might be as good as a moto tire. I don't know, I really enjoy the braking grip on this tire. I, I can't give it three, uh, three wheelies and feel good about it. In predictability, it's a very predictable tire. It, it, you, you get a sense of what's going on all the time. It's a joy to ride. It covers a wide range of, of terrains and speeds really, really well. I think that's what this tire has going for it. It just does a lot of different things really well. And I would say that really adds to, to uh, my opinion of predictability. Wear is fine. I mean, it's a gummy hybrid tire. It's going to wear. Um, I would say it's, it's on par with, uh, you know, with, with soft gummy tires. It's not terrible, but, you know, it, it's not great, right? I mean, it's a performance tire after all. 
Now let's see how the performance points tally up. The Michelin Extreme gets 15 out of 20 points. The IRC JX8 Kokoda gets 17 out of 20 points. In summary, the Michelin Extreme Enduro Tire gets 30 out of 40 points. It has very good upright traction, probably some of the best upright traction I've ever tested in tire. It has extremely good carcass feel and carcass flex characteristics with very good precision. It is, however, very poor in sand and it's very poor in soft soils. And the faster you go, the worse it grips. It's not a tire you want to spin. Ultimately, in my opinion, this is a very focused tire. It's very good at slow, and hard, slow speeds and hard riding, but that's about it. It's just a very focused tire that really just doesn't shine in conditions outside of, say, hard enduro. The IRC JX8 Kokoda gets 34 out of 40 points. That's a good score. This tire has very good traction in slow and fast speeds, does well in the sand and in deep soil, has good wear resistance and good handling. It's just a very well-rounded tire. It does everything just well. It's an impressive tire, and I remember after a couple rides on the tire, I felt, man, I should just go buy another one. What a good tire. And the winner of Tire Fight Episode 3 is the IRC JX8 Kokoda. This is a star among hybrid gummy tires. It is exceptional across a wide range of soils, terrains, and speeds. IRC did its homework with this tire and hit it out of the park. What a good tire. Nothing against the Michelin. The Michelin Extreme, it's a very good tire. I just feel that it's very restricted and limited by the soft or the short knobs that have to comply with FIM regulations. Those knobs, they just, they don't hook up in soft soils. And it makes the tire just really limited and really specific to hard pack, dry conditions. All right, guys, there's episode three. Uh, the winner is IRC JX8 Kokoda. And uh, I gotta say, I, I really like this tire. I, um, like I said, I usually test to, uh, to you know, anywhere between 10 and 15 hours, and I went ahead and put 20 hours on this tire. And yeah, I'd say at this point, the tire's pretty much shot. I ran it on my 250 and I ran it on my 450, and the 450 just really demolishes tires. So I am gonna rebuy this tire. This is a, a very good tire. As far as the Michelin goes, I, I you know, I, I when I first put that tire on, I, I really liked it. Um, I thought it developed a lot of vertical grip and it had a, some very, very cool properties of traction. But to be honest with you, like, um, the more I ran that tire, the less I liked it. And to me, it was just uh, the more scenarios I put that tire in outside of, you know, just just straight up traction, straight up vertical traction, the more I realized how limited it was. And I really think that tire is limited by the short knobs, which are mandated in Europe. We don't have that problem in the U.S. It's just not a problem. It's not something we think about in the U.S., but it just it just really holds that tire back. I think the rubber and the and the carcass of that tire is just um, and I keep pointing over here because it's mounted on this bike, but the carcass and the rubber on that tire is exceptional. But it just doesn't have big lugs and it just cannot develop traction in sand or in you know, soft soils and it really holds that tire back. I will say um, I don't care that much for this tire. Um, one, I I ride in areas that are not uh, extreme for the most part uh, and I certainly uh, and I live in an area where the riding is generally faster than I think what that tire is designed for so it's a very good tire I think if you bought that tire and you rode only let's say in the Pacific Northwest or in areas that were very uh, slow speed and technical and uh, you never rode any high speed I think you'd be very happy uh, but in my opinion, it's a very narrow scope tire, right? It does it does a couple of things really well, and then outside outside of that, it just kind of it just kind of falls apart. The performance just really suffers. So, I don't think I'll be buying that tire again. To be honest with you, um, I think there are better tires out there now that just do a larger gamut of things. Um, I will be buying this tire again, this JX8. In fact, I remember doing a couple rides on it and thinking, man, I should just order another one. And I went to order another one and they were out of stock. So I, the tire really is that good. 
Um, it does everything really, really well for a gummy hybrid tire. It's, um, yeah, it's super grabby and sticky and it holds up well at high speed um, and, it, and it doesn't fl overly flex. So um, that's, those are my thoughts. Uh, I'd love to, again, I'd love to hear your thoughts about, uh, about this Michelin tire. It's kind of an uncommon tire, so there's not a lot of information out on it. Um, but for us here in the US that can use tires with giant lugs, uh, I think it might disappoint a lot of guys, especially at high speed. Um, but that's just my thought. I'd love to hear what you guys think if you've run the tire. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time in episode four.